Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're going to be introducing life design for the 16 personalities, right? And often people tend to assume that their life is fixed, that we are stuck with a certain set of resources and capabilities and drives, and we have no choice over how we feel or what we do or how we live and what ends up happening to us. And in times of stress, it's especially easy to feel like you're just so overwhelmed that all your actions become like autopilot, you're just reacting to the things that are happening around you and you don't get to say how you want to live or how you want to feel, right? But in today's video with life design, I'm going to be introducing to you subtle things, small, simple things that you can do on a daily basis to really make a difference in your life for your own health and for your own well-being. And the first thing that it comes down to is neuroplasticity. Developing neuroplasticity is key. Having the ability to reform your scripts and how you think and how you see the world and to build new pathways and connections to allow you to deal with and to adapt to what's happening in the world. People that are able to rebuild their pathways, to create new connections, to learn new skills, to develop new abilities, these people are able to adapt to the world more easily and feel more in control of what's happening around them. Instead of following the rules and feeling like you're stuck in an unfair game, use life design to rewrite your rules. As an introvert, what I want to recommend to you is to rethink how you engage with the outer and inner world. The first thing I want you to consider is how you act around other people. Often social interactions are colored with invisible sets of rules and social norms. Often we end up feeling like we have to be a certain kind of person. Introverts feel socially anxious and stressed when engaging with the outer world, feel that they have to be more funny than what they are, feel to have, that they have to talk faster, feel that they have to be more engaging than what they are. And extroverts simultaneously, contrastingly, feel that they have to sound more sane than what they are, right? The extroverts often feel they have to control themselves, to hold back, to not speak out of turn, to speak more slowly, to restrain themselves, to physically hold themselves down to, from doing things that other people might find stupid, right? So yeah, we all have invisible rules. But what if we change those rules? What if you as an introvert felt it was more okay to engage with the outer world as an introvert? What would happen to your social batteries if you felt that when around other people you could talk more slowly. You could be more quiet. You didn't have to participate. You only participated if you wanted to say something. What would happen for you as an introvert if you felt that when you engage with the outer world, you were allowed to speak more calmly and you were allowed to take your time to elaborate or explain an idea without people interrupting you, right? These are the kind of things that we have to consider. Life design is about rewriting how you act and how you live so that you can have more flow. Flow being emotional health and well-being. Flow being energy, motivation, and the sheer confidence and self-esteem to trust in who you are, to do what you love, and to do things in a way that feels natural and comfortable to you. When we do things that feel uncomfortable to ourselves, we drain ourselves, we stress ourselves, we exhaust ourselves, right? And we also end up slowly becoming more and more depressed. People that feel they have to act or be something they're not often end up feeling burnt out as a result. And so when an introvert feels forced to act like an extrovert, this kind of a person will slowly burn themselves out. Similarly, an extrovert that has to physically hold themselves down or to be more controlled often ends up feeling like they are a bit alienated from other people, like they aren't able to be who they are and that there's something wrong with them. All these actions work to one cause, they hurt your self-esteem, right? So whenever you do something that doesn't feel natural to you, whenever you change yourself to fit in, you hurt your own self-esteem. You end up feeling worse about yourself, you end up liking yourself less. So often this is what we need to do, right? When you're an intuitive, a lot of the time it comes down to valuing novelty, being progressive, thinking ahead, being novelty seeking, wanting and valuing change, right? And so a lot of the time intuitives are pursued in pursuit of the new, what could be, what could happen. But a lot of the time intuitives feel they shouldn't, you know, what if 
that thing that they're so excited about turns out to be stupid? What if uh, it doesn't work out? What if, you know, uh, they've already changed too much? What if, you know, they should just stick to what they're already doing, you know? And what if people think they're weird or odd if they do these things, right? But of course, the fact that there are explorers in the world means that we also get the chance to be confronted with change and new possibilities. If you weren't able to do these things, well, of course, the world would slowly stagnate. And so we have to think about ways to fill ourselves up with energy. As an intuitive that's able to explore, you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel more stimulated. And so an intuitive that chooses for constant change and learning and novelty, this intuitive is going to feel happier, more excited, and they're going to have more energy than an intuitive that chooses tradition, chooses comfort, chooses stability even if it gives you a short-term sense of fitting in, it's not the right thing to do. Similarly, as a sensing type, a lot of the time it can feel like uh, you should be more interested in theories and read more books and you should uh, study things and you should learn about different things, but you know, for you it's never really been what you've been all about. You've been all about going out, doing things, experiencing life, meeting people, making real connections, engaging in sports, connecting with others. And for you, a lot of the time, theories and ideas can seem far-fetched, strange, and why are they even interesting in the first place, right? For you, there's no energy there. There's no fun in this. There's fun in an idea that you can act on. There's fun in a theory that you can use for a practical purpose, but there is no fun in ideas and brainstorming and creativity and change just for the sake of it. And so as a sensing type, allow yourself to pursue action first. Allow yourself to experience life. Allow yourself to go into practice right away. Allow yourself to go and actually do things, to intern at places, to get into work, to try things out with your own hands and to let yourself be okay with that. There is nothing wrong with making these kinds of choices. There is nothing wrong with being interested in the real world. The real world is a fascinating place to be and sensing types that allow themselves to do these things will have more energy, will have more fun and will live more stimulating and exciting lives. When you're a thinking type, it comes down a lot to motivation, right? The thinking types are motivated by critical thinking, by evidence, by empirical approaches to life. And so the thinking type seeks to prove and confirm and test and verify that the world is correct. That we, what we think about the world, that we can understand it, that we can know why it's there. That we can have proof for valuable reasons or motives to believe in something, right? So a lot of the time for a thinking type, it's about finding more efficient ways to live, finding more effective ways to do things, finding better, more functional ways to solve problems and to explain what's happening in this crazy world, right? Because there are so many things that we can't explain, so many mysteries to unravel, so many things happening. And thanks to thinking types, we can have answers to these things. But many thinking types feel that, you know, uh, maybe by speaking the truth, maybe by thinking critically, maybe they're hurting other people's feelings. Maybe other people find them boring for doing this. Maybe, you know, other people do, will dislike them if they are, and that they allow themselves to engage in these kinds of actions, right? And so as a thinking type, life design is about finding ways to live which are and feel for you that they're getting you further towards truth, right? Truth, accuracy, knowledge, and answers, answers to the questions, right? So here, what you can think about is, you know, how can I, live my life as efficiently as possible? How can I gain as much knowledge as possible? How can I know for sure what I know? How can I test and verify my existence and why I feel the way I feel and why I do the things that I do? And to allow yourself to do these things are, is to give yourself the right to feel motivated, right? Motivation is what allows us to work towards a long-term goal. If we allow ourselves to feel motivated by something, we allow ourselves to pursue goals, right? So a thinking type that feels that they shouldn't be doing these things will often struggle with motivation. A lot of the time it will be, you know, I want to know why this is the case, but maybe people won't like me if I start asking these questions. And so maybe I shouldn't ask these questions. And then 
the second thing, maybe I shouldn't do anything at all, right? And that kind of apathy is dangerous. And so you have to think about what you can do to motivate yourself. And to motivate yourself, find what you want to know. Find what truth it is that you seek, right? And as a feeling type, a lot of the time it comes down to pure, sheer openness, right? Sheer openness in the sense of wanting to experience all aspects of life, wanting to see and hear every viewpoint, wanting to consider every idea, to uh, step into and experience every feeling that there is to feel, right? And so to be and to live a full and rich life, a kaleidoscope of experiences, color the world, to add nuances where there previously weren't any nuances, to see the quality of life, how things are felt, not just what things are and how and we can explain the things, but also how they are experienced by you as a personal observer, a subjective person. Now, a lot of the time as a feeling type, it can feel as you're dabbling in craziness, right? You're exploring wild theories that will never be tested, will never be confirmed. You're interested in maybe spirituality and experiences and things like that, that people will kind of say are wacky or cannot be proven or are, are probably a pseudoscience. But for you, they feel really nice. They feel really interesting. They feel like they add color to an already very beautiful world. You feel that they enrich your life. They, you feel that these things make things feel more motivating. And it's once again about motivation. Feeling and thinking is about what motivates you. And so if you want motivation, think about what's the most interesting way you could live your life today. What is the most interesting decisions you can make? What are the most nuanced expressions and thoughts you could conceptualize today? What are the most beautiful ways to draw or explain an idea that you can think of, right? These kind of things are the things that give you motivation as a feeling type. So allow yourself to have an experience and explore these things. As a judging type, what will give you confidence is often a sense of control, a sense of direction, a sense of knowing where you're going, right? Thinking long term, organizing your life and setting a plan for things. Those things are what help you relieve stress, right? A lot of the time, judging types are stressed by short term sudden change, right? So when things pop up and you didn't plan for it and you didn't know it was going to happen and you had no idea it was going to happen. Now these things, when they're just a few of them, that's fine. But a lot of the time, you know, <laughs> keeping a constant state of open-mindedness can stress your system. And so judging types that feel that they should try to just go with the flow and to have no plan and to open up more will slowly and easily overwhelm their system with uh, unexpected interruptions and things that distract them from things that often they find fascinating, right? So often a judging type is more confident the longer they can work on something and the more focus and the more discipline they can put into something, right? So if they're able to really work and stick on a path for a long amount of time without being interrupted, and if they're able to anticipate correctly what's going to happen and move towards that direction and then see that happening, right? To get that closure from a long-term project, that's so it gives you confidence as a judging type. So don't force yourself to feel like you have to adjust and be adaptable and do everything as you go just because that's what everyone else around you is doing. Allow yourself to have a plan and to make plans and to find soft and flexible ways to set rules and to follow your own path and passion. As a perceiving type, it can often feel like you should have more goals, right? Many perceiving types will compare themselves to judging types and they'll feel, you know, this person is so planned, so regular, so focused. I want to be like that. I want to have those capabilities. I wish I could stick to something for a longer amount of time. I find myself constantly revamping systems, changing things up, going in different directions, changing my mind. I wish I, like them, could just stick to a thing and then see it through to the end. But a lot of the time, as a perceiving type, you'd be happier and you'd be more confident if you allowed yourself to be adaptable and flexible. If you could be like water, something that adjusts its course to what happens around it, somebody that can go with the flow, somebody that can adapt and be spontaneous in a situation, that's what often is going to help you de-stress. A perceiving type that plans and forces and fixates this kind of a perceiving type is going to feel constantly stressed. So allow yourself to 
change that around a little bit. And so allow yourself to say, hey, I don't like working with this kind of a structure. I don't really benefit from having all these rules. I don't really feel good about having to constantly conform to this kind of a way of work, right? I would be much better and much more effective and much more productive if I could switch tasks more often, if I could go and try out different things, if I could have more variety, if I could change up my approach, come up with new ways to do things on a consistent basis, yeah. It's okay to set a routine and then change it the next day and then again the next day and then the next day. You don't have to feel like you have to stick to something just because that's what you said you were going to do. It's completely fine to take a plan and then make a new plan and then make a new plan after that. And that's what life design is all about. Life design is about finding ways to live your best life, to reconsider all the rules that you live by, all the norms that you follow, all the things that people tell you, and to instead say, hey, does this really work for me? Does this really feel good for me? Does this really energize me? And so you might want to consider everything about your life, how you live, what you do at work, how you do your things at work, and you might want to consider who you are with your friends and other people. You might want to say, what if I started doing this a bit differently? What if I changed this? What if I tried that out? What if I made that change? You know, what would happen? Well, think about it, try it out, and then think for yourself, did this make me feel better? Did this give me more energy? Did this feel more comfortable for me? Did this feel and make me feel better about myself? If it did, yeah, stick with it. Keep trying, keep working at it, and allow yourself to be you. That's what life design is all about. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all in the next video.